Hello guys, and welcome to a new video of my YouTube channel Vince. I'm super excited because today is the first time and ever someone is joining me. Today I'm here together with someone comes in. <laughs> calling Luke VX. <laughs> Fun thing, we're gonna be at Malmo all together. We're gonna be fresh, so expect some content from us guys. That's why we are here together already to talk about Eurovision, to get in the mood. We have our drinks, maybe we have alcohol, maybe we don't have alcohol. You will see it's probably somewhere in the videos. But I'm having a hot tea, I'm getting ready. I'm having... Mm. <laughs> yeah, Chris, what are you drinking? <laughs> yeah, tell us, tell Happy us. B. Happy on Blanc, darling. <laughs> and with only two weeks left, we are like super close to Momo. It's almost over, I don't want to think about it yet. But first, we have a lot of things to do. And today, I had the idea to predict the semi-finals who are going to qualify. So I asked them to make a list. I think everybody did this already. They have it on paper. They sent it to me. I saw the results. And we have here our 10 qualifiers. So I'm curious to see. So I want to know like one or two sentences why you think it's going to qualify or what you expect from the staging. So let's move on to the first semi-final. So here we go. Are you ready? Yes! Yes, ready. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we start, I'm just doing the running order with okay. Cyprus. Do you think Cyprus is going to be in the final? So yeah, I think Cyprus will be in the final 100%. Um, the reason I think Cyprus will be in the final, it goes without saying, Cilia is an incredible singer, actor, dancer. And she's opening the whole of Eurovision. Everything that we've seen from Celia leading up to now is just spot on. And it goes without saying she's only 17. So um, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, she is 100% going to the final, in my opinion. Yeah, I have to agree as well. Like, from what I've seen from Amsterdam pre-party, she killed it. You know, we know she's got a very good American, you know, choreographers, big social medias. She's opening the show with a fire, and I think she's going to do very well. Okay, great. I agree with you guys. I think she's going to qualify. Cyprus is going to be in the final. We open with a hit. The dancers are hot. The song will be hot. Liar. Liar is going to be in the finals. We cannot lie about that. Next country we have, or you want to say something, Luke? I just wanted to say as well, all of the dances are from Denmark. So it's quite an okay. easy to travel to, you know, if you want a sleepover. <laughs> hey, watch this face. <laughs> okay. Uh, Let's go to Serbia. They are seconds in the odds. I will start with this one. Um, I don't oh I see Serbia on my list, like as borderline qualifier. I'm not really into the song, but what about you guys? So Chris, tell me. So with Serbia, I think the only thing that lets this down right now is it's placing in the semi-final. Um, everything else. This is definitely going to the final for me. Um, it, it's just got so much deeper meaning. Um, it's representing the Lila Ramondo flower of Serbia, and it has so much history and it's rooted um, in, in it's like Serbian culture, but it's going to be about the way they translate that on stage and get it across to other fans across Europe. So um, I don't think it's going to be winning the semi-final by any means, but I definitely think it's qualifying. So it, I'm putting it as a qualifier right now. All right. And Luke? No. <laughs> no. I like the song. I can see why people love this song. Like, I get it. However, for me, it gets killed in spot two. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's any coming back from it. Okay, so that's both this day in the semi-final, it's over. Yeah, sorry Serbian fans. We love you, but who knows, we can see, maybe we are wrong, and Chris will be right. Oh, right, I thought it was going to qualify as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> just you. <laughs> the first current is Look Talk, Look Talk from Silverstar by Lithuania. Um, Luke, can you start with this one? Yeah, this is qualifying. I think the beat is affectious. I've seen him well. I was gonna say a few times. I actually was in Mal no Stockholm when he performed at the mini pre-party. Um, but I was in the toilet. But I did see him in Barcelona and he was good, and Vince can agree with that. So yeah, I think he's qualifying. But he's a toilet break song, you say? 
No, no, no. I didn't know there was a break. I was going to say that's a long toilet break, Luke. <laughs> there was a break. <laughs> there was a break in between, and I went to the toilet, but didn't realise he was going to be on. Uh, sure. By the way, you have been on a toilet so long. We're keeping a PG, guys. <clears throat> Chris, do you see me? for us to know and the, what the view is to find out. Yeah. Um, so, Lithuania. <laughs> Lithuania is qualifying. Um, this is probably the best entry that Lithuania has sent to Eurovision in years. Um, and, yeah, this is such an earworm of a song. And it goes off whatever venue this is played in. It just gets the crowd going. So I personally think whatever spot you put this in the semi-final, let's go into the final. So yeah, Lithuania qualifying. I agree with you guys say, I'm not gonna say anymore. We see Lithuania in the final, so excited for that. Oh my god, this may be interesting for you guys because your neighbors, Ireland. What do you think? It's really mixed. The old say is like it's we gonna be in the top ten to win, but maybe they don't even qualify. So Chris, what do you think about your neighbors? So this is a difficult one. Um, it's something completely different. And in previous, like past years, in the last couple of years, being different in Eurovision has boded well for countries. Um, but in this year's Eurovision, I'm going to say this is not qualifying, unfortunately. Um, absolutely love Bambi Thug. I love everything they stand for. Um, they're an incredible performer. Um, saw them in London pre-party and they were they just they burnt the stage up it was incredible um, but it, I, I would love to see Ireland qualify because they haven't done it for a few years now it's been a while um, but again I just don't think it's their year again this year sadly so I'm putting Ireland as a non-qualifier Luke I have to agree I love Bambi as an individual and they performed actually like a slower version of Doomsday Blue on a TV show last night in Ireland. That was so good. It got a lot of attention. Yeah. And she played the piano as well. Like if she did that, like not exactly that, but I feel like it, it, she could start on the piano and then mix to it being like proper rock and it would be even better. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I think they are really like that. They're what I think they're making Irish people proud, and that's what matters. However, the only reason why I think this is not qualifying is Chris's sister is a non, you know, she isn't a Eurovision hardcore fan. So she didn't really know the songs. And at London party, <laughs> I heard her screaming when Bambi was on saying well, this. Yeah, when Bambi was screaming. No, no, no. <laughs> The sister was saying, like, Bambi scares me. This song's just terrifying. And I just think if that's a casual viewer, how is that going to translate? Yeah. So I have to check out the performance from last night, I think. But personally, it's my last place. Like, I am like your sister. I roll runaway. It's scary. But I think it's not going to qualify. But still, I'm like, it's crazy. And people, some people are like, they just vote for the most crazy stuff ever. And this is incredibly crazy like i never it's like a song i can not even really play to be honest but maybe it'll do i don't know if it goes to the finals i have no idea this is so hard ireland for me this year i don't know completely agree yeah it could, like, i think it could do like shockingly a top 10 but then it could also not qualify like yeah. you know. it's better to, it's better like a stage performance than listening to it just on the radio yeah she oh so, yeah yeah, uh, let's move on to the next country, Ukraine. They didn't they didn't win last year, but they won some years ago. Um, they always qualified, so I think they will qualify again. Luke, what do you think about Ukraine? Yeah, I'm keeping it short and sweet. It's qualifying. I do think the hype has sort of gone down a little bit since the beginning, but I do still think it's going to do very well. Okay. Chris, Ukraine. Yeah, 100%. Ukraine is qualifying. Um, completely agree with Luke. Um, I think when this first got released, people were like, oh, it's a winner. Like, this song is winning the contest. Um, but since we've had all of the songs been announced, I think that's a bit more uncertain now. I'm I'm still like, I, I think that there is a lot they're going to unleash for that actual performance. Ukraine always nails their staging. Um, and so I think we're in for something special for, for, from Ukraine. I don't know what it's going to be, 
but I think it's they're somehow going to make it even more emotional. Um, and I don't think we have a, many of those kind of like emotional songs this year. We have a lot of Televote friendly songs this year. So um, I think they've got something up their sleeve still. But yeah, goes without saying, this is going to the final. Okay, so Ukraine still keeps their qualifications week, if you think, and we will see them again in the finals. Let's see how good they will do. I'm very curious. Like last year, they got a pretty high telephone score with an okay song. I think this song is much better. So, with what place did they got last year? Fifth? Sixth. Fourth, fifth? I think it was sixth place. Yeah. That's pretty high. Okay, let's go. Um, Build a tower. We go to Poland. She's performing in the sixth place. Um, Chris, you look a little bit orange slash red. What do you want to say about the Polish entry? I've got red cheeks. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, it's no. the alcohol going to my head. No, <laughs> um, ah, oh, this is a difficult one for me because this is one of my favorite songs to listen to on the radio, um, or on Spotify or whatever. I absolutely love it. Um, but as the live version stands. I didn't, watching Luna in London, yeah. she has quite like, um, she has a certain type of like voice and style of voice. Um, and so I don't know whether, and this is a really powerful song. So I don't want to be harsh, but I, I it wasn't as impactful to me at the London Eurovision pre-party, but saying that it's just pre-parties. So uh, this is so difficult, but I'm going to say it's qualifying for now. Um, I think that there's a lot they'll do with the stage the staging. Luna is an absolutely incredible, um, she's so talented and she works the stage. It's just going to be on the vocals for me. Um, but yeah, right now, I, I'm saying this is qualified. Uh, this is one of my favourite songs. This is my mum's 12 points of the year. So I hear it pretty much a lot every day. I think it's very radio friendly. But then I was confident that Denmark last year was going to qualify because that was very radio-friendly, breaking my heart. Mm. Uh, but then another thing that scares me about Poland is that she has the same stage director who did Embers, the UK, 2021. And that makes me scared because we saw what happened with that staging. <laughs> we um, haven't done anything else, this stage director, or is it just Embers? thing but this is the thing if i got told okay you're having this stage director i would be like i am funding myself <laughs> she's she's gonna have a polystyrene tower on stage uh, yeah, oh. to get the polish effects like dramatic effects like fire towers everywhere you know poland is really good with the effects they kill it with blanca with the rain and everything that's true yeah but, i mean blanca goes without saying like that literally like the way she started off to, to that grand final performance, like that's a transformation. So, yeah. Ah, I do think Poland is often underrated. So, I'm going to go with she's qualifying. Okay, period. And Poland is still yet to get a win as well at Eurovision. So, maybe this will be the year. Yeah, I have yeah. to book my flights very soon as she. And I think this is going to qualify as well. I love it. I think we all love the song. I can hear like it's in my top 10. I love to listen to it. I agree with Chris that like life, she doesn't really convince me. Convince me is the right word. Like I think there's work to do in her vocals, her stage presence. But I hope they're gonna get everything right for Malmo that they had some time off when they didn't go to the pre-parties in the Netherlands and Amsterdam and the one in Sweden. So I hope her vocals better. Uh, but I'm so happy she goes to Eurovision. I love it. Very so very radio friendly. Then to close the first half, we have one of the fan favorites actually. It's Croatia in the seventh spot. Mm. Ah. Luke, what do you want to say about Croatia? Are we gonna see Croatia in the finals? I think it's an easy question, but is it? <laughs> Joking. Um yes, it's quiet. Um yeah, people like baby lasagna, people like the song, it's gonna get points. <laughs> but you don't. <laughs> I made it very clear in our video, Chris, that... I know, I know, I'm just kidding. I said what I said about that. I said what I said. And I'm not repeating myself. If you want to find out what I said, check the click, video. Click here on the link uh, above. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's qualifying, period. Okay, Chris. <laughs> yeah, this is qualifying for uh, 100%. 
Um, I've expressed already how much I would love Croatia to win the Eurovision. I love Baby Lasagna. I love what the song is about. Um, but and I like I like the vibe of the staging we saw in Dora, but it's not winner vibes to me right now with the staging. And I'm going to be completely honest. Like uh, it, like it. I know this is a viral dance move. Oh. But there's something about I. I don't know. It's just, uh, I like that that little dance break section. It's a dance break section for a reason. Like, and Baby Lasagna can dance. He's got moves. Yeah. So I could just like I can envision him like the the camera panning to that little dance break section after the like the the rock bit, and like them just having a bit more choreography. So I would love to see that instead of just this. Yeah. But this is already viral now, so we're stuck. But. Go yeah. saying with that, and also, oh God, I'm laying it out on the table today. I also don't like the um, the drummers, what they wear. You uh, know the the knitted things. Yeah. That's scary to me. I don't like. I don't like it. I'm sorry, yeah. but God, <laughs> going in today. But everything else, I absolutely love, and I hope they change those things for Eurovision. To be honest, but we will see. But yeah, this is going to the final. Okay. I agree, and I don't really I think it's like very Slavic or like Croatian, the things that were, but to me, I don't know. I don't like the vibe. It doesn't give me the vibe I like to see. You know, I'm talking about the things you said, mentioned, Chris. The, I don't know how you call it. I have no idea. But I hear yeah, it's like traditional, traditional stuff, right? Yeah. But like yeah. when the song came out, though, like when that song got announced in the door lineup, I was like, this is a winner. This is like, it's got everything. So... Yeah. They just need to clean up the staging. Yeah. yeah. Do another uh, dancing, you will say, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, this is going to qualify. I don't see this as a winner. Like, I'm I'm really surprised how this is second in the odds. I'm like, not don't really get it, but I like it. Um, so, yeah. Croatia, then we go, I think, to a little bit like a weaker second hall. We have Iceland first. What do you think, guys? Is Hirab Jörg coming back to the finals, or? I feel it's coming. I know it first. Um, we will be seeing Iceland in the grand final. People aren't ready for this conversation. She's going to be the Belgium of 2024. Mark my words. Wow. Um. Okay, so Luke made this statement at 8.38pm on the 20th of April, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> And if Iceland comes last in the semi, you'll find myself hiding in a toy. <laughs> <laughs> or, or partying with Hera Bjork in the Euro Club. Yeah. <laughs> huh. We'll be bastards. Um, I feel it coming. Oh, 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 oh no. Sorry, didn't mean that. What did you say? I'll be yeah, singing yeah. Tiffany to her. <laughs> 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 I think that's the last thing she'd need. <laughs> On a serious note, I think this is very underrated. I yeah. think casual viewers, I think they'll get behind this. And come on, how can you not smile at it? Yes. Yes. I have to completely agree. Um, sorry. Um, okay. No, I sorry, I don't I don't agree. But um this uh, this is not qualifying to me at this moment in time. However, this is a grower for me. Sorry, you know, I'm not looking at you, Luke. You're just going to make me laugh. Um, but this is... Um, why, what is it about this country that we always just start pissing ourselves <laughs> off in? Right, okay. So, she's scared of heights and she's not going anywhere, but I don't think she's going to make the final. Um, and the reason being is because people remember of how iconic she was in 2010 with Je ne sais quoi. And she was a fan favourite back then. Um, and i be completely honest, like when this won, I was so happy for Hera Bjork coming back. It's such an achievement to come back to Eurovision for a second time. Uh, many people don't get to do it once, but I was expecting a better song. Um, and I just think it it's Hera Bjork. She, like, she's been backing singer for so many different um, artists for Iceland. Um, Joanna in 20, two, two, uh, 2009 um, 
one step at a time in like 2016 or 15, I think it was. Um, yeah, she's she's done so much. She's been present at Eurovision so many times. So she knows what does well. Like she she's not a stranger to it. So I'm just a little bit disappointed, even if the uh, the fact was that she didn't, she came into um, Song for Kepin not really knowing if she was gonna, with the idea of winning. I, I would love to have seen something stronger, um, but it, it's not a bad song at all. When this is on, like I'll dance to it. Like it, it's definitely been a grower for me, but it's Hera Bjork. Um, and I just think it, it could have been so much bigger and better, but Maybe, like Luke said, maybe this could be the Belgium or Australia of the of last year. Who knows? Well, Australia said last year, help me. Uh, well, you came yeah. nine in the grand final Voyager. Oh, I'm shocked by that. Uh, no, I, uh, I lost my, my point. Uh, I think there's not going to qualify. I see the odds is super low, and uh, I would like to to qualify. And I can maybe see like a Belgium situation. But I don't know if the juries will really go behind this and the televote. Well, maybe the house, like the house moms, everyone says, oh, the house moms will like this. They will vote for this. Uh, but this song is for me, it's there. It's not coming to win. But I think Belgium was there also not to win. And they did very well. The top seven, I think. Yeah. So, mm, they get surprised. But let's see. They're, they're after Croatia. I don't know. Maybe. Exactly. Coming after like one of the bookies' favorites. It's... <laughs> It doesn't it doesn't bode well, but hey, all the best to her. Yeah. We, we, love, her. we love Hera. Yes. Love and we her. want to go to Iceland. So um yeah. Yeah. We win. Well, maybe when the volcanoes cool down. Yeah. But... yeah. Yeah. Otherwise if we go is coming out and we don't want that. And I'm sorry, but for the amount of publication that we have been doing for Miss Singer Osk with um Go Tiffany, I think she should allow us to stay in her back garden. <laughs> Go yeah. Okay. So she'll give us a tent and then we'll just stay in the back garden. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In ninth, we have Slovenia. It's not on my list, guys. What about you? Is it too, uh, gonna qualify? No. <laughs> no. No. I think she is amazing live. Every time we, you know, we saw her in London, Chris, we saw her in Barcelona. <laughs> like, she is great. But me and my mum were saying last night, when I think it's the last 40 seconds where it's like deep sea Veronica, that bit that's like yes, but at the beginning, I just think it's too much of a build, and I think people will get I'm not gonna say bored, but people will lose interest very easily. Okay, so this is my top five of the whole contest. Um, oh. I absolutely love Raven and I love this song, Veronica. Um, it's a total serve, and like. Raven's journey to Eurovision she's tried so many times to get to Eurovision and honestly like I don't know like this was co-wrote by Boyan from last year um and I, I again this song okay on the radio it's not so like in your face and it might not be something you play all the time but I think personally Slovenia is one of those countries this year that has held the most back on staging so I have a lot of hope for this in two weeks' time because the dancers that we've seen that are with her um, and, like, I, I feel like this song, it's, like, the, it's one of the countries that has so much choice to be able to do with their staging. It's such a, a witchy vibe. Um, and the music video, I always go back to the music video. That music video was so iconic. Um and I love that it's not just a ballad. It's got like some like steady builds in there and like some like bassy sections and like pauses and bridges and stuff. And then it just keeps going. Um, I I think as long as the Slovenian broadcaster and Raven work together with Eurovision to get the camera angles on point, um, this could do very well. So this is a qualifier for me. Okay, I didn't know it was like so high in your ranking. I'm surprised, but I like that we all have like different kind of taste. Um, I think if she qualifies, the juries are really gonna like this. Like the last forty seconds, she's belting all these high notes perfectly, flawless. So maybe if she qualifies, she cannot be like uh, Estonia last year that she comes like top ten. But I don't really think so. But there is a chance. Yeah. But like you say that though, Vince, it is only a televote um 
semi-finals, yeah. aren't they? So that's what is that she needs to pass that hurdle first, and then yeah. I think she'll she'll flourish in the final. Um, but, yeah, yeah. I, this is why I get um, Georgia twenty twenty three Eru with Echo vibes for Slovenia. Oh, yeah. oh because, my heart's still breaking from that. That was really popular within the fandom, and everyone was convinced that she was easily qualifying. And if there was a jury in that semi, I think she would have qualified. I agree. Yeah, that makes me. That's what makes me scared for Slovenia. Yeah, but I think yeah. like, there's less hype for Slovenia. I mean, I think this year than Georgia, right? Let's see. Maybe it can come like ten and then do b- way better in the in the, so in the grand final. Let's see. It's after Slovenia, we have Finland. Very party crazy. There are no rules. I think for Finland, there are no rules that they're not going to qualify. It's going to be like telephone friendly. But in the final, I think it's all like the twentieth place. So I think they're going to qualify. It's going to be crazy. I'm a little bit dumb by them right now. Like I saw their. I don't know. I'm just a little bit dumb with the energy or something. But okay. Mm. Vince, I completely agree with you. Everything you just said, I completely agree. I think this is going to go easy, like sail through the final because it's televote. But I think every what they showed at UMK was like incredible. But I just can't see. I think it's just a bit tired now. And I think that like what more can they possibly do? Like if anything, it's the one country that's had restrictions since bringing out, like with the logo him being naked well like yeah. semi-naked yeah like it, it's i absolutely love the song i think it's amazing but i don't know I, it's difficult because then you have a lot of people who watch eurovision for the first time as well yeah. on that saturday night so maybe they will like it yeah but i don't think juries will so yeah i think it's qualifying but yeah we'll leave it at that <laughs> luke qualifying 100 percent. i think top three maybe of the semi um, I disagree with you both on the tired situation. I think Finland brings so much joy, and every time I see them, is it as good as the UMK performance? No. But still, at pre-parties, they just, they're fun to watch, and I just think, you know, they, yeah, they just make me happy, and I like them as individuals, they come across nice in interviews, so I hope for the best, but they're not going to do well with the jury. Like we saw in UMK, they came last with the jury. Yeah. So, yeah, does it give me hope? But they'll be in the final. The next song, I always forget it's competing in this year, actually. It's Moldova. Like, I don't listen to it like ever. Um, at pre parties, I'm not really, it's for me like a toilet break this year, Moldova. I mean, nothing bad. <laughs> it just stands out enough for me. And I put Moldova as a qualifier because it's Moldova. They both stay just wow. right. Ooh. But I don't think, yeah, it's not in the bookies. It's like second to less. But I f- still think it's going to qualify because it's Moldova. But I don't really like it personally. Mm. Chris. Yeah, it's funny you say that because Moldova has uh, had a really good reputation in the last couple of years at Eurovision. And of course, we can't forget Natalia Babu and her song Fight back in Eurovision 2007 was amazing. So. <laughs> 2021 Natalia with sugar. That's why I was clapping. Uh, <laughs> me too. No, a bit further back. A bit further back. You were very too young, probably, for your both of your times. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, 2007, she was incredible. Um, I think it was like, I think she, she came to 10th place in 2007 with her song. So amazing that she's back. Um, but again, I don't think this is qualifying, sadly. Um, I would love to see it as a surprise qualifier, um, but I'm curious to see what they do with the staging because I think that it was kind of like Marmites. Like some people loved the staging in the um, Etapa Nationale, some people hated it. So um, I liked it because I loved all of like it, it just looks so in unison, and I love a Eurovision performance that just looks like really slick and polished. But I know other people didn't like it because it was like they all look the same. How is that like diverse? So um, I, I'm interested to see what they they put on the Eurovision stage, whether they'll keep it similar to the national final or whether the, she's going to change things up. I just like, for, for Natalia, like, again, like, it, it's just the chance to go back to Eurovision. So for her, I hope she doesn't think of this like, oh, if I don't get to the grand final, then, like, I've, I've not done myself proud. Like, she needs to, like, she's been part of every pre-party and I hope that she's just enjoyed the whole journey. Um, 
and just like yeah just just lived her best life at eurovision um for a second time um but yeah saying all of that I, sadly i don't think it's qualifying because it, it's a strong year that's it what i've heard she's <laughs> going to be alone on stage probably it's because of maybe because of money issues i heard that last year they almost didn't have any money for smoke or something so i think because of money reasons or at least she's going to be not with dancers on stage. I think that's sad for her and makes her okay. chances even more. Don't trust me on this, but I think I heard this. I saw that as well. I think mm -hmm. social media. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, I stand by what I said then, given that. I'm going to make it short and sweet. I don't see this as qualifying, but Moldova does find a way to qualify when they're underrated. And yeah, Chris said it. Natalia, great person, does all pre parties, seems to be loving life, especially Eurovision life. Good for her, you know. But I'm not, you know, I'm not going to give you a lecture like Chris, but <laughs> I just don't think she's going to qualify. So the next country in the winning order, I don't think it's going to qualify. I think the last years they haven't really been their strong, like, I loved um, Miracle in Sweden last year in Stockholm. I think I still play this so. <laughs> but, <laughs> Mirror, Mirror, Miracle. I love that one. But the last year, I feel like there's something off with them. They don't really send strong entries with the team. <laughs> so, yeah, for me, it's not going to qualify. Chris? Mm -hmm. For me, this is a qualifier. Um, uh -huh. I think after last year, um, it. I think that they are back on like the track again to being back in the final um i think it's just it's it's just such a soothing song and both um both singers have such incredible voices um and i think like that they have such slick staging every year even if it's not the strongest song they they bring something like quite slick and polished and i think this is the kind of song that Bodes well. Similar to um, ooh, Nadia Rustamli or 2022. Maybe I've got the name wrong. Um, but um, Fate of Black. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but um, I think that it, it could be that kind of scenario again. Um, and again, they had um, uh, violins on stage um, as well. So I think that, yeah, this is a qualifier for me. Um, no. But like, why are you laughing? Enjoy. So, yeah, I think no. But I do have to disagree with Vince on the, like, yeah, they might not be in the strongest era, like, the last few years, but I do think every entry that they've sent is good, but just not competitive. Like, I don't think they've sent a bad song. And did I, was I in tears nearly in Italy when I saw Fade to Black? Yeah, I was gobsmacked by how good that was live. Um, I was like, why the fuck am I crying to this? Um, but, you know, fix. Yeah. I the power of music, eh? Yes. You, I, what, what year was that? 2022. What beauty. was the Bound of Beauty. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, no. Unfortunately, I don't see disqualifying. Okay, let's move on all the way to down under Australia. Only three countries left. Um, no, it's not going to qualify, but I'm really unsure about this one. They are just in the odds. They rise up to the 10th place. I can see it, but I just was like, no, it's not going to qualify. It's I don't really pay attention to them. Maybe that's why I don't think it's going to qualify, but maybe you guys pay more attention to Australia. Who wants to start? I'll start on this. I think if it wasn't for the music video, uh, I think people would have this as a sure qualifier. Mm -hmm. I think the music video just, you know, uh, doesn't do it justice. And uh, can I say this? I mm -hmm. think uh, I actually know one of my um, parents' friends his cousin is the head of delegation for Australia. No way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I trust what Australia does every year. I think they're one of my favourite countries. Like, one of my all-time favourite songs of Eurovision is and We've Got Love, Just Come Out, Boy. I think Australia serves quality. Um, and Electric Fields, you know, came second in Australia Decides in 2019. Their performers, 
Um, and I saw in an interview, I think on Twitter X, um, that the artist said that people shouldn't be counting them out because they've not saw the live performance. And I believe that. So I think this could also be the Belgium of this year. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. It's always good to have a close connection to have delegations of Australia. Absolutely. Right. We spoke to him, but... You're already this close to host when Australia wins Eurovision, I think. No. Oh, you know, I, I'll do... No, that was an Australian right there. But I well, might... me, and, me and Vince better get VIP when that happens. Yes. You? Oh, like with my flag. You go, go, go. You, Vince and Chris? I don't know them. <laughs> Let's get two more countries to go. Uh, I didn't say my thing about Australia. You didn't even give me the chance. <laughs> okay, take your spotlight here about Australia. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, okay, so I don't think Australia is qualifying, sadly. I think it's borderline, but I think this is 11th or 12th place, um, in my opinion. Um, yeah, like Luke said, they've they've left a lot unturned um, to what they can get in to what they're going to show at Eurovision. Um, but um, although this is just a great fun song, I don't think it's going to qualify. Hmm. I think there's a few other ones that are stronger right now. Yeah. Maybe it's, I think, smart. They gave us almost nothing. No pre-parties, no concerts, no video clip. They they can go all the way. But we have no expectations from them. Maybe that's also fun. Like, we have no idea how it's going to turn out, right? Mm. Correct, so, yeah. Fingers crossed for Australia because I want them to stay in Eurovision, so I want them to do well. So, next I want to hear about Luke thinks about Portugal. For me, right, I'm putting my opinions to... Whenever you're ready, hun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't get the song. But you know me, I'm a basic bitch. If there isn't a dance break or girl <laughs> back off <laughs> to my car, um... But, like I said in Man and Chris's video, Portugal, I like how they stay with what, like, they don't care, they don't follow a trend. They're not sending something like cha-cha-cha or, you know, fuego or, you know, they just do their style. They don't care if people like it or not. That's that, you know, they just do what they want to do. And I like that. It's going to qualify, I think. Yeah. I'm surprised that I actually said that, but yeah, I think it's going to qualify. Good running Gorda, second to last. Yes? Yeah. I think before you were going to start talking to like now, it's well not going to qualify, but then you were thinking in your mind, and you're like, yes, it's going to qualify. I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> I had as a yes anyway, ho. Okay. <laughs> Chris, what do you think? Uh, I've been going back and forth with literally in the last five minutes of this and another song that we'll talk about. Um, and I've uh, yeah gone back and forth, back and forth, but I'm putting this as not qualifying because of its place in the running order before the, the song that's finishing the the semi. So I think it will be overshadowed as a result by the last song in the semi that we'll talk about in a second. Um, this... <laughs> Again, it's it's cut, we're cutting ha splitting hairs here, but this song I think will get a lot of rec recognition because um, we don't have as many ballads this year, so um, I think this will stand out. Um, and again, that long held note when Yolanda sings, it's just oh, it's it's just beautiful. Um, given in the running order and the song that comes after after this, um, I'm going to say it's it's. 11th place like it, it it could be there but i think yeah yeah <laughs> not qualifying i'm very excited to hear what song is coming next to this one but first i want to give my opinion about this uh i think it's i put it as a qualifier it's not my personal qualifier i just think there are not so many slow songs so that maybe can go through it's like late in the show um just a random prediction of like Portugal is gonna qualify and what Luke said, they always stay in their own genre, like their own kind of style, Portugal, in Portuguese. Is there any English in this song? No, right? Fuck this song, no. 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 So, as Archie, but it's not working for me yet. Maybe it will come alive in Malmo, I don't know. Uh, but it's still one of the songs, like Moldova, I don't pay attention to it. Maybe it can be Dark Horse for me later, but so far, no. But then I want to know from Chris, what's the country that is closing? Ooh, tell me. <laughs> uh, Luxembourg. 
Okay, what's special about Luxembourg? Like, can you tell me what's special about it? <laughs> So, um, okay. so, first of all, I've interviewed Tali, so, oh. no, I am, she's lovely. Um, Vince, like, you said that in the group chat, and Vince still hadn't watched it. I love it. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I think this is qualifying because um, the National Final Performer, it's, it's an extremely difficult song to sing, Piter, um, and... You try. I didn't try, no, because I, I there's not even any point in me trying, Vince. <laughs> um, but it's like Tali said to me herself, like she could sing anything from like Wicked or like Broadway. This is another level. This is such a fast tempo song. Um, and in the national finals, she hit all the notes, but it's just it, it it's a hard song to get through. But that was before the revamp. This song has been revamped. She's got some sections in there where it gives her time to breathe. There's slow sections, and I think it's more slick and polished now as a result. Um, and again, I think even if... I, I thought it was so polished in the national final at Luxembourg. So even if we saw that, and with it closing the semi-final, I think it's going to be memorable to people. Um, and again, it, like again, it's, it's really splitting hairs with Portugal and, and Luxembourg for me. But given that this is a televote um, semi-final... I'm going to give it to Luxembourg. Okay. I was missing one detail. It's their comeback in Eurovision. That's what I wanted to hear. 31 years. Yes. So I think the, every commentary will say, oh my God, Luxembourg is back. They will get some maybe even like a promo. I don't know. People will know this for sure. I'm, I think so, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. This is, I put it as a qualifier. I loved it when I first had, you know, the studio version. The national final performance, I still loved it. I was like, yes. Like, I'm so... She was my winner. And you know what? Since then, it's sort of gone like... You know, it's still midfield for me. I still enjoy the song. But... Oh, God. I feel really nasty. Like, Shady. I, she was one of my least favourite performances at the London pre-party. Like, I forgot that it happened. Were you in the toilet then for that bit? No! <laughs> you bitch! <laughs> You're only on the toilet. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but I think Tali, yeah, you know, Chris has interviewed her. I think she seems really nice. And I think, I think it was the last time uh, Chris would interview her. Sorry? Nothing. Go on, Nandu. Tea. Vince, like, have you had some shady tea in that class? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think looks and bags qualifying. What about you, Vins? I'm taking over the host duty. <laughs> I think it's gonna qualify. But for me, it's not. I wish I was like, oh god, to go go to Luxembourg next year is winning. For me, it's like mm, it's in the middle of the road. It's a little bit generic, basic. I love those kind of things, kind of things. But for this one, it's not working for me. Um, I put it as a qualifier because they're back after so many years. They are less to qual to perform. I expect that uh, Luxembourg will put some money on the staging. Um, mm -hmm. For me, the revamp, I almost don't hear any difference with the other version. But maybe I just don't listen and closely enough. Um, I'm happy they are back, and that's. That I hope more countries like Monaco or Slovakia comes back. Like, oh I mean, mate, if, Mon if Monaco comes back, be ready for the budget. I'm, I'm, <laughs> do they have a big budget? Be ready for the money. Be ready for yeah, they'll, they'll, have, they'll, they'll have be the budget. Deal peak wealth, honey. They'll be okay. <laughs> they'll be throwing everything at that staging. Sorry. So I want them to do well because then the other countries will look at this like, okay, they can they're small and they are big, they do well. So why are we not trying again? So I'm hopeful for them. Let's give them a top 15. It's going to end 18 plays in the final. Let's say that. But I hope the best for them. So this is everything for the first semi-final. Thank you, guys. Chris and Luke, do you want to share your names from your social media right now? Of course. Right? You can see me at... Um, so I'm Chris Calling on YouTube. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Chris underscore Calling Official. Um, and TikTok, Chris.Calling. Um, yeah. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Luke. Yeah, Luke. So YouTube, Luke Reacts underscore 20. 
um, Instagram, Lou Griffiths underscore 20, and a little bit different <laughs> on TikTok. I am UK Memes for You, which will be all of my Eurovision content will be on that account. And on X, it's right. Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> I will put your uh, channels down in the description, so check them out. And I can't wait to see you guys in Malmo. It's only two weeks left. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be party. It's going to be, I don't know, it's our first time with friends. So. Because you two have been mad as well on person. No, only No, I cannot wait. Friends. But I've met yeah. you, so I already know who I like more. That was, the viewer wants to know this question right now. Yeah, I think you can tell us after the video. <laughs> no, let's, let's tell it now. <laughs> I love you both, but like there is a funny story, me and Vince from Liverpool 2023. What? What what? So is that the reason why you like him more? No, there's a funny story, isn't there, Vince, about our friendship in 2023. Did you have a friendship then? No, because I didn't want to speak to Vince. <laughs> That's true, yeah. So we were at Eurovision in Liverpool, but Luke saw me, but he, he didn't want to talk, I think. And... The same group type of thing that night. Yeah. Just new dancing. Yeah. So you, you said my name? Huh? Okay, no, let's end this video. Thank you so much <laughs> for watching this video. Like, subscribe, and see you guys in Malmö. Yes, bye, bye. guys.